Well, the thing that we get from National Grid is they'll call us up on the phone and say they want to lower our uh, National Grid bills. And if you convert to a different type, we say, well, we're off the grid. Well, you can't be off the grid. We wouldn't have your phone number. Well, we are off the grid. And, uh, you know, if you can lower our bills from zero, we'd be happy to talk to you. And then you just get a dial tone. You know, they just hang up. I grew up in a small town in upstate New York, uh, one of seven children. So my parents were constantly yelling for us to turn off the lights. Boy Scout, uh, joined the Army after that, went to uh, school, Syracuse University, graduated, have a photography degree and a photography studio in Saratoga Springs, New York, do commercial industrial advertising photography. Lived in a lot of different places, seen a lot of different things, and now back home, less than 40 miles from uh, where I grew up and met a beautiful woman that grew up in a very similar fashion than I did. We were, were contemporaries. She uh, was raised in a large family and uh, has the same values. So, you know, finding uh, someone to share the vision of uh, living off the grid and in a sustainable way is, uh, is really a big part of being able to do this. I think that we had the same vision when we first started out. We wanted to share a home and we wanted it to be something unique and something that we could work at and enjoy and be here for the rest of our lives. After a couple of years, we found this property and walked out here. And during that little expedition of walking into this wooded area, Tom found a tree, climbed up in the tree, and he looked out and he said, I think this is it. I think this is it. And I, I agreed. The piece of property was a mile from the closest power pole. It was the property that we wanted. It had a view, it had woods, it was, uh, uh, situated properly, we talked to National Grid. And they said, well, we'll hook you up. We'll bring the poles in, we'll bring the wires in. $70,000, how's that sound? And then the pleasure of having a bill every month. There's gotta be another way. We started looking around. We went to some a solar fest in Vermont and talked to some solar engineering folks. Uh, in particular, we found a company called Vermont Solar Engineering out of Burlington, Vermont. And this guy gave us a quote that came out half the price of what it was going to cost to bring power in from National Grid. It's a no-brainer. You know, what do we have to do? Put solar panels on the roof, windmill in the backyard, battery bank in the basement, inverter, charge controllers. You're all set. You're off the grid. A lot of people, when uh, you say you live off the grid, they, they get this vision in their minds of a bunch of hillbillies. You know, here you are, you're living in a shack out in the woods and, uh, you know, there's no power and no water and you get a, an outhouse in the back. And that's just not the case. The only reason we are off the grid is because we don't have a, a wire coming to our house to provide power. Other than that, you, know, you wouldn't know this home is off the grid. We have all the same amenities that you have in your home. We have all the electricity that everybody else has. Ours just comes from uh, the sun through a battery. We have uh, you know, the dishwasher and uh, running water and toilets that work and a septic tank. I haven't run into any yet. We've been here nine years. My wife has been an integral part of all of this. You know, you, you can't do it by yourself. And if you do, it becomes a very lonely existence. And I found her before we developed the idea of of uh, living in this way. And one of the nice things was that she bought into it right from the get-go. I was the one that would read the manuals, find out how something works, you know, troubleshooting something, 
and he would rather just sort of wing it, you know, <laughs> um, which he's good at. And some things, it's fine, but I, I like to know. I like to know why. A lot of people will just leave their homes up to the builders and, and let them build it as they will. Uh, but we really wanted to know how this thing ticked and make sure that we had a hand in the process if we're going to live here. We went to a town hall meeting where they were interested in putting solar into another community in the, the town. There was a woman that spoke and uh, was against the project for putting this solar array in this particular location and she said that it is very inefficient and you're not able in the northeast to actually make it economically viable to have a solar array and uh, and live like that and i was the next speaker and i said well i, I have to beg to differ with that woman because we've been here for nine years living off the grid with just solar and wind and we find it very economically viable our system is a three kilowatt system, which means we have three kilowatts of power in the battery bank when it's full at the end of the day when the sun goes down. So if the sun is shining, we have power going into the batteries, so we'll have power to use. If the wind is blowing, the windmill's cranking out and we're putting power in our batteries, we have power to use. We have a crock pot going. We're using electricity and we also have the sun going, so the crock pot is cooking our dinner by the sun's rays. That's pretty cool. If there's no wind and no sun for a couple days and the batteries get down below a half a charge, the propane generator kicks on and automatically charges the batteries and automatically shuts off when the batteries are full an hour or so later. So we never lose power and that's that's really nice. You don't have to worry about the refrigerator going down or uh, issues like that. So if you turn on the lights and you leave them on in rooms you're not in and have the stereo playing and you know, utilize more power than you have, then that generator is going to kick on. And when the generator kicks on, that's when we start having utility bills because we have to pay for the propane. So you turn off the lights on your way by. The generator runs about 100 hours a year. Normally the, uh, the generator run the most when there's low light and not a lot of wind and the days are short and you know, there's a lot of overcast. But it's, it's just a backup generator. It is not to run the house. There's no maintenance with the solar panels whatsoever. The windmill has to be lowered every five years and just have the bearings checked and we can do it ourselves. It's pretty simple. Monthly maintenance on the battery system is uh, less than 10 minutes. The, the solar electric system that we have, you can use whether you're on the grid or off the grid. If you're off the grid like we are, because there's no wires coming to the house, everything is sustainable. It's self-sustaining. We don't have any power from outside. You could have the same system while you're on the grid, but you just don't need the battery bank. The grid becomes your battery bank. That's where you store your power. You have solar panels on your roof or a pole mounted system or a rack mounted system in your yard. The panels grab the solar energy during the day and your meter spins backwards because you're producing more power than you're using while the sun is shining on your panels. And then in the evening when the sun goes down, you turn on your lights. Now the power comes out of the grid and your, your meter is spinning forward. And that's called net metering. I, it doesn't make sense to not do this. If the technology is there and it has been for 3,000 years, we've just been ignoring it. Indians built their homes into cliffs on the north side of the cliffs facing to the south so that the sun in the winter warmed their homes. That's how our house is built. It's oriented east and west. The major window side faces to the south. The sun heats the home. Uh, it's, it's sustainable. We don't have to have a furnace in here cranking out and using fossil fuels to warm the house. It just makes sense to, to build a house in a way that is friendly with the environment and, and fits into the environment and uses the, the physics of the natural world around it. Anybody can do it. If you're building a brand new house, why orient to the street? Orient to the sun. You can make your house more efficient, more sustainable, and cut down on your, uh, your power bills, even if you are on the grid.
in the winter time, the sun is low in the sky so that it comes in through the windows. In the summertime, however, the sun is higher in the sky. That's why the days are longer because the sun rises farther to the north and goes directly overhead. When it goes overhead like that, it doesn't come into the home through the windows because of the large overhanging eaves. So the fact that we keep the sun out of the house in the summertime keeps the home cool. When it gets cold out, the, uh, the house being heated by the sun in a passive solar design, the colder it is, normally the more clear it is too. And the clearer it is during the day, the sun is shining. When the sun is shining, it could be 20 below zero. But if the sun is shining, this house is 70 degrees, babe. You also have something for that heat to be absorbed through. So in a passive solar home like this, we have uh, black slate or dark tile or stone walls and that absorbs that solar radiation when it comes in in the wintertime, collects it during the day when the sun is shining on the, the black floor, and then radiates that heat out in the evening to keep the home warm. So that's all part of a passive solar design. The other way that we warm the home is we have a masonry heater. It's very similar to a wood stove in the fact that it burns wood, but unlike a wood stove, it, uh, you don't have to keep feeding it wood the nice thing about this is because the fire only burns for two hours, once the fire is out, we close off the flue going up and we close off the air coming in. That heat stays in the unit and throughout the evening radiates out into the home. The home will actually be warmer in the room where the fire was the next day than it was when the fire was going because the thermal mass is collecting all that heat and radiating out. The other nice thing about a unit like this is the guy at the end of our driveway that also burns wood he burned 13 cords of wood last year. We burned less than three cords of wood last year. He loses all his heat right up his chimney. Our house is built out of structurally insulated panels or SIPs. And these panels are not something that everybody knows how to build with. We had to hire a timber framer to put our house together because timber framers work with SIPs all the time. Uh, the regular builders, when we told them we wanted to build a house out of structurally insulated panels that were twice as efficient because of their insulation value, they looked at us like we had two heads. What are SIPs? We don't work with those. I'm sorry, we can build you a nice house out of sticks, but we don't work with those. And even though they're more efficient, that's not how they build homes. And if we can teach more people to build more efficiently, then you can have more efficiently built homes. The same structurally insulated panels that we have built the house out of that keep the house warm in the winter by keeping the heat inside and the cold out. They work in reverse in the summertime. They'll keep the heat outside and keep the coolness of the day inside. We have a garden on one side of the house, now we have a garden on the other, a lot of less grass to mow, and we're making our own food. We have a root cellar that we put in, and it's filled with potatoes right now, and carrots, and beets. We don't use pesticides, we don't use fertilizer, it's just dirt, and water, and sun, and we'll be eating out of the, the root cellar all winter long. We're just average Joes living a little bit different. Every spring we have what we call our chainsaw party and we get about 24 of our best, uh, most reliable friends and they come up and we uh, get out the chainsaws and the log splitters and uh, go to town and we start at 8 o'clock in the morning, get done at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We've got six cords of wood cut down, cut up, split, stacked and everything raked up and ready at the end of the day. Then we come inside and eat pizza and drink beer and have a good hoe down and, and it's always a party. So. One of the things that's sustainable is sustaining friendships too. And living off the, the grid and, and living in a sustainable way. You know, people that aren't doing it, you know, they want to do it and they want to help out. And they want to see what that takes. You know, as far as cost for building a passive solar design home like this, it, it really doesn't cost any more to build a house in a smart way than it does to build it in let's just say a way we've been building them. The structurally insulated panels might cost a little more in the fact that they're um, the way that they're designed and what they do, but 
it's all in one. You've got the siding, you've got the inside, you've got the insulation. It's all wrapped up in one. All you gotta do is put it up. So you're saving time on insulating, you're saving time on putting up studs, and yet it's more efficient too. So, you know, the costs are a trade-off all the way through. We don't have a furnace. So we don't have the cost of the furnace. We don't have a cost of feeding the furnace. We don't have a cost of all the duct work. So we're heating by the sun instead. So we have a little more in the slate floors that we have. We have a little more in the masonry heater that we have that, that take the chill off. But you know, it's a trade off all the way through. And when you look at the square footage of our house, what it costs to build, as opposed to the square footage of someone else's house, cost is the same. We haven't paid a utility bill since we left Saratoga, which was nine years ago. In reference to the power companies and the whole grid, you know, before there was a grid, there were power companies. And these power companies were building windmills and windmills were all over the east. They were all over the west. You can still go out west and find windmills that are creating electricity and pumping water and they're, they're still in use today. And you can still buy windmills that do that. 150 years ago, that was a great way to live. Everybody had a windmill and the power companies were selling you windmills and then somebody strung up a bunch of lines and hooked us all to this grid, and now they got us all by the short hairs. Can I say that? Now they got us all by the short hairs because you know, we're on their grid and we have to play by their rules. Well, we got our own rules. The Germans are all buying into this. They're putting solar panels on their houses and on their barns and, and in their backyards. And there's an incentive and a desire to do that. And in Germany, if you're not doing that, you're the odd man out. We need to put the shoe on the other foot, start turning us around and say, all right, you're building a new development. You know, is your development oriented properly? They do that in, in developments out west where they actually orient the streets properly so that the houses are not only oriented towards the sun, but to the street too. Actually in the, the, the deeds of these homes, they have sun rights. You cannot build a fence that shades your neighbor's property and blocks the sun. You can't grow trees that are so tall that block your neighbor's sun so that these homes are sustainable and they can get power from the sun for them. So, you know, there's, there's ways to live with each other and, uh, and still have a sustainable world out there. You know, the sun is right there. It, it burns all day long and we're just ignoring it. We're turning our back to it, being powered by fossil fuels. We're fracking to get out of the ground. Absurd that we're going to that extent when we've got something coming out of the sky that is free. Why not take advantage of it? This up and coming generation really embraces sustainability. In 20 years, we could be a lot farther ahead than we'd ever think we could be. I don't want to ever leave and we, we built this home so that we didn't ever have to leave. We've, it's all handicapped accessible and the main um, things are all on one floor, the kitchen, the main bedroom, bathroom, laundry room are all on one floor. So um, we do have a lower level, but hopefully two of us won't be incapacitated. <laughs> we, uh, we like the way that we're living and uh, we're gonna be here for another 20 or 30 years. Thank you.